Alright guys, Merciless Vaughn back with another Bleach Brave Souls video and in this one we're going to be taking a look at the Manor or Ahime that came out earlier this year. I decided to do a showcase video on her because one, I didn't pull her at the time and I just recently pulled her. And two, this is a character that you can vote for for the poll selection banner. So I guess this showcase can help you determine if this character is worth your vote or not. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh show off the character hopefully you enjoyed this video if you do please leave a like if you're new to the channel or you have been here for a while please consider subscribing and help me get to 250 subscribers and with all that being said let's go ahead and get started all right so this orihime is a speed human affiliation unit with the hollow killer which is great because we don't have a lot of hollow killer units in my opinion I only managed to have this one copy of her, so that SP is at level 10. Her soul trait is strong attack recharge, time minus 12%. Taking a look at her skills, she has paralysis on all of her abilities except her SA2. Her SA2 is just has the buff effect, and then you also get barrier on it as well. Her innate skills are sprinter plus one, guard break, and at full stamina only reduce strong attack cooldown 6%. She has a 20% Bruiser, 40% Berserker, Devastation 40%. She has Share Complete Status Immunity, Havoc 20%, Frenzy plus 1, Defibrillator plus 5 seconds, Enhancer, Multi Barrier plus 2, Booster. Which are some great skills to have, you know. This character can definitely be usable in the Guild Quest for uh, ranged Hollow Week if you really don't have a NAD unit that could just, you know, help out with that. And her having to share complete status immunity as well just helps out too because then whatever status helmet is up during that time, the, everybody else will be immune to that status helmet as well. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for her skills. I mean, she's just pretty much a support character, I like to say. She, I mean, she has the booster and enhancer skill, which is great. The booster skill just increases the effect of the boost that you get for her SA2. Multi-barrier plus two just means you get more barriers. I believe she'll have five overall, while everybody else in the party will have three. And uh, share complete status immunity, you know, it's just great to have. It'll help out the team. And at full stamp, you get an extra 6% to your strong attack. 6% reduced strong attack cooldown to your strong attacks. And so, yeah, that was just a quick overview of the character skills. As for the accessories and links I'm going to be using them for the showcase are going to be the Super Spirit Javelin, Fortification Pill, and the Great Whistle. As for the character links, they're going to be Psychomon Chat, Psychomon Aizen, and also the Sinji with full stamina damage boost. And as for the bonus abilities, I gave her a full stamina damage boost and, you know, just that extra 200 SP that you get. It is 200, right? Yeah, extra 200 SP with the new bonus abilities that we have recently just gotten. And yeah, so that's it for the character skills, accessories, links, and bonus abilities. Let's go ahead and jump into some content to see what she can do. Alright, so here we are in an inheritance zone. There are a ranker and soul reaper enemies in this one, so she will not have killer. But as for her basic nash string, there it is right there as you can see it. Nothing major because she is an SP unit. And speaking of her being an SP unit, as for her first strong attack, it is going to be the SA1. I'll put the details of the strong attack somewhere on the screen. Here's her SA2. Yeah, as you can see with that multi-barrier plus two, we have a barrier of five hits. And her SA3. Basic full screen. And so, yeah, not much to say about this character besides her just really being a support unit. If you really want to keep her at full stem just because she had that you know, extra recharge reduction for her strong attacks. Uh, her SA2 is great. Booster enhancer, multi barrier is really good. And I lost my force now. Now, oh, yeah, I guess I just took way too many hits. I had all the five hits on my barrier, and I guess to just uh, use all the hits. 
Well, not I'm not at full stem. I lost my full stem boost and that increased strong attack reduction. But I'll get it back with that right there. Um, as for if she's gonna be on the post selection better or not, um, I'm not too sure. I didn't really, I took like a quick look at the selection, uh, there were some okay units on there. Uh, I think another unit that I saw on there was that, uh, Tensa Zangetsu that came out earlier this year, but I think he'll be one of the few characters on there as well, so she might be on there too. I mean, she's not a bad unit, she's okay. But I think she's just okay. Alright, so here we are in a solo inheritance trial. It is a ranker enemies this time around. So she will not have killer. And yeah, you really won't be using this character in co-op IT because she doesn't have the increased super link slot potions. And you know, just her not having the current killer, I don't think she'll be that useful. I mean, she will be useful with her SA2, but beyond that, yeah, she'll just be okay in the current IT that's up right now. Seasonal Noel and Akin are here to give me extra super pots because I need all the extra pots I can get. But that Akin does have the increased speed, character attribute, strong attack damage, 20% skill. So my strong attacks are doing 20% more damage with him here. But yeah, this is just one of the many characters that have a possibility to be on the whole selection banner. Uh, I, I don't know, by the time this video comes out, I think post-selection voting will already be over. So if she's on there, cool. Um, if not, I mean, there'll probably be other characters. There'll definitely be other characters that will be on there. Alright, so here we are with the last run for this showcase. Um, yeah, she's just strictly a support unit. The only bad thing about this character is she doesn't have any way to heal. So if you lose that full stem, you just pretty much, you know, don't have that full stem. And if she's not at full stem, if you put full stem and damage boost on here, you won't get that bonus and you won't have that 6% reduced strong attack cooldown. So yeah, the multi-barrier will help with that, um... Keep her at full stem, but if you lose the most, if you lose your barrier and do take a hit on your health, then yeah, her usability just pretty much went down. I wouldn't say by a lot, but just a pretty decent amount. And since she is immune to all status helmets as well, you know that's another reason why you can use her in IT if you want to. Now, I'm pretty sure she'd be an okay character to use in Guild Plus as well. Just with her SA2 alone in the complete status, shared immunity will just be really beneficial. Alright, so that was a brief showcase of this unit. Um, overall, she's just a support character in my opinion. The booster and enhancer skill is great. Multi-barrier is good as well. Uh, yeah, she also has a share complete status immunity 100%, so if she's inflicted with a status element, everybody else is also immune to that status element. And other than that, uh, yeah, not anything too special really besides just from support. Uh, at full stem, she does have the 6% reduced strong attack cooldown reduction, but she has no way to 
get back to full stamina. So you're just pretty much relying on that multi barrier skill just to try to help you stay at full stamina damage boost. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's going to be all for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and thank you for watching. And as usual, until next time.